Now I'm out of breath. Twenty. Look at this. We have to oh, look at our uniform or something. Oh. <laughs> well, it is Monday night. We have some possible breaking news. I haven't heard anything, but earlier today, Bryant McFadden, who used to play for the Steelers, mm-hmm. said that there's something big coming. Something, something big. Of course, I can't. Well, you know, when you say big, like I still maintain that they may go out and get Tyler Boyd, which to me would be reasonable. I think within reach if you're saying big to me that means either t higgins or one of the 49ers receivers um maybe he knows something we don't he probably has better insight than we do on something like that i just i guess i'm afraid of what we'd be giving up to do that i I thought since nothing nobody moved from the 49ers during draft day i thought okay debo and Ayuk are there to stay um maybe that's all done now we'll talk next year Maybe it's maybe not. I don't know. Um, I just I fear what you'd have to give up. Well, I, the, the the tweet is, ooh, Omar is working. The Steelers are very close to landing a significant player. Hashtag stay tuned. Hmm. You know, I was thinking um, about that, Joe. I was driving around today thinking about tonight and some of the things that we could talk about. And like if they did that, because I got a text from my brother-in-law about what McFadden said, if they did that you got to figure out, I still would love to go back and be in a room when old man, well, I guess you call him somewhat old man Rooney and Tomlin and Khan sat down. He said, this is unacceptable. You need to fix this. Cause ever since then, we, our quarterbacks are gone. We've got new quarterbacks. We got Patrick queen. I, I mean, it's been, it's I don't want to say heaven for Steelers fans, but it's been like any unlike any other trip we've seen in the last two months. It, I wouldn't be surprised all, if they got one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, and and here's here's why, and it's 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 because of exactly what you just said, Rooney. I'm sure he had a talk with Tomlin and Omar Khan, but he also had a talk with the media, and he said, "We're tired. We're tired of losing. We're tired of the way things are," and. Ever since then, everything has indicated we're going all in. You know, getting getting Queen, the, the things with the quarterbacks. Um, in this draft, who which has universally been considered praised and said this is, you know, the, the, the Steelers drafted better than anybody, but almost every single player in this draft is quote unquote old and experienced and like plug and play ready to play right now not some project that can play 2 years from now they want, we want them to start right now cuz we are all in right now this year baby yeah i i think all i i would say it's like all in part a and part b i think all in to i think all in reasonably speaking is win a couple of playoff games, maybe make to the AFC title game, and then B next year, all in, we are Super Bowl contenders. So I think right now they're at least one win better than what they were, um, maybe two. And uh, you're right, the, the draft, I graded all the players for tonight. Um, I think it was fantastic. I thought they made some decent free agency acquisitions later after the draft too with uh, Prumley and uh, the kid from um, – West Virginia, uh, what's his name? Beaton Jr. Um, something like that, yeah. Beanie Jr., yeah. So it's like, I mean, I can't – I thought after our thing on Thursday night, okay, we got uh, we got the tribal chief. We got F- Fautu uh, – how we say this? Do we, Troy Fautuau? Fa- Fautanu. Fautani. It's, just think of him as like – Polamalu Fautanu. It's it's the Fa-utanu. same. Okay. <laughs> so there's everything you like about this kid. Here's my thing with it, though. If there's one trepidation I have, don't do what you did last year with Broderick and have him sit out to week eight until Chooks shoots his mouth off to put him in. I mean, my only thing to you, and Mike Tomlin doesn't need me to tell him this, if you believe in these kids, believe in your decision to draft him. Believe in yourselves as a coaching staff and have this kid start week one. 
I don't want to hear. Remember we sat back here, you and I, well, maybe they'll wait till week three or four after the Raiders or something. Like maybe he'll be ready. The, the kid's ready. Okay. You, you went in first draft, first round draft pick. Like last year, you moved up to get Broderick. Uh, and then you, you, you sat, sat him on the bench for a while. No more sitting on the bench. Get these kids in. Like you said, plug and play. Let's go. Here's the thing. I, you know, I, I think their reasoning for for not playing Broderick Jones and Joey Porter Jr. right away was, well, there's this rookie wall and we need to preserve them for the end of the year and stuff like that. Guess what? The games in September matter just as much as the games in December. They're they're equal wins. You win in September, you win in December. They're, they're the same. A game is a game. So you need to yeah. win right away. So, yeah. Now, the, the other thing, Broderick Jones did not have the most experience. So it kind of no. makes sense that he would sit uh, sit a little while. But I don't think that was the case for Joey Porter Jr. I think Joey Porter Jr. played. played but with Troy Fawatanu, he's had plenty of experience. So he's just ready to go yeah. in. Where he's gonna go, that's gonna be interesting. How that's how that's gonna be deployed, you know. Do we put they kept saying Broderick Jones needs to be a left tackle? So you put Broderick on the left and, and Troy on the right, or I don't know if, if Troy is you know, because he's always played left tackle, but then again, left tackle with a left handed quarterback is kind of like right. I, I don't know, I don't know. That's it's that's gonna be interesting how that all works out. Either combination is better than having uh Dan Moore in there, who, who at best should be a swing tackle off the bench. You can't swing. Um, right. <laughs> so, you know, uh, he'll, he'll be gone after this year, probably another reason for some of the other, you know, linemen we'll get to later in the draft, but um, you know, no, I, I think it's fine. Uh, I, I love it. And I really think these are two big guys um, that are now protecting, you know, the Steelers quarterbacks. Um, you know, Jones, obviously bigger, but um, uh, you know, I tell you what, it's been a while, but when they showed, if you watched it, and it was noisy in the bar, I know. Uh, so apologize for the background noise on that one. I didn't have my earbuds. But <clears throat> Tomlin in the press conference, when they started talking about him watching his game tape, he was grinning ear to ear. Or, to steal praise from one of our favorites, smiling like a butcher's dog, you could tell whatever they saw, they really, really liked. So uh, A-plus on that, I don't think there's any question. The way – the draft worked out is almost disgusting how it all worked out. Um, and almost every round the Steelers got quote unquote, the person that they wanted without making one trade to trade up or trade, trade, trade back. That's amazing. That is that that's, that's either Omar Khan is like a time traveler and knows exactly what's going on. <laughs> Or or what? But for for them to get all all the players that they wanted, that's a little. That was just either extremely lucky, or you know they say they, the the reasoning I heard was, you know Omar Khan is not the football guy. He has football, you know, like Andy Weidel. He's a football guy. Paul um, Tomlin. That's that's a football guy. He's the numbers guy. He's the guy that negotiated all the contracts, the salary cap guy, and that was his job for make many years. And and in doing that, you know, he's negotiating with all these agents and all these, you know, all these players and stuff. And I guess because of that, he made a lot of connections and he kind of knows what every team is doing or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But there's yeah. just amazing luck going on, especially in those later rounds. My god. Yeah, now so we get that round two, right? With so Zach Frazier. So which I think can't speak for everybody, but I'm pretty sure most of Steel Nation, since JPJ was gone, I think everybody's like, we need Zach Frazier. Because after Zach Frazier, you had the kid from Georgia, and you're right, he was kind of like Broderick Jones last year, right? Minimal starts, uh, could be huge upswing, but you know, we're talking about a center we need plug and play. Uh, and those three picks before the Steelers were the Bang or the Panthers, the Bengals, and the Rams. They pretty much sure the Rams didn't need a center. That new kid they've had two, three years, not a great guy. Bengals need one. The Panthers really needed a center. And I started to get a little worried. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, are they are they trading up? Because I could see the Panthers getting this kid. 
And when Carolina didn't take him, I was like, okay, okay. And then there's the Bengals, and they didn't go for him. And I'm thinking, he's ours, because I don't think the Rams are going to get him. So Rams didn't. Rams went somewhere else, like cornerback. Um, so, boom, Zach Frazier falls to us. And what I was hoping would happen, happened immediately. They started releasing his his wrestling videos, because he was a beast. Four-time state title cha- champion in West Virginia. Um, I do a lot with West Virginia high schools for work. Um, I know it's a smaller state. It's just as big in West Virginia as it is in PA. Uh, I, I put it right up there with Oklahoma and Iowa. Uh, Ohio as huge wrestling schools. Everybody in, who's anybody in West Virginia wrestles, and he was one of the best. He was tremendous. Um, I, I put a tweet out, here come the Carlton Hasselrig, because I, I never forget when they drafted Carlton Hasselrig. You know, Cope was going nuts that he was a wrestler. He's a wrestler. Mm-hmm. He's a grappler wrestler, and you know, and so I think I think Myron Cope was the one that told him to draft him or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which I best think... probably yeah. So um I told you this year I, I had the pleasure of watching him play twice um in person. Uh, I loved him. Uh I, I said then to my buddy, I said uh, we we're going to need a center. Cause you know, at that time, Mason Cole, you know, he was stinking. Uh, I was like, I could, I don't know if we'd ever get this kid, but I love it. And it's boom, there he is. So there's the center that a lot of people wanted. Um, and, and so you're right, Joe. So two rounds and two big needs are, are done for no, nothing that we talked a little bit about. Well, if they go cornerback, if they do this, which they could do, but they two needs boom. And again, I give that an A plus. Uh, because he's a, here's a center who started for two and a half years. Uh, he, he was everything you wanted. We, um, the first round, we were looking very closely. You know, everybody was saying beforehand, it's like, well, it got to be tackle, but you need that center because we, there is no center. Hello. And they get their tackle in the first round, and then people are freaking out. It's like, what about this? Because Graham Barton went 26th to the uh, to Tampa Bay, so that was the, yeah. that was the darling that everybody was talking about. That was hyped. It's like, oh, the Steelers are definitely taking him. So they take um, Bautanu, and then the second round. And the second round, I'm 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 watch. I'm I'm at a restaurant and it has the uh, the draft on, and every almost every single pick. In the second round, was a trade, and and and, and yes. that just that just gave me a little heart attack every single time. It's like, oh my god, no, 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 no. Um, but but everybody kept trading for a wide receiver. It seemed like or a cornerback. Um, yeah, and then it just it just magically fell. And and you know, and then when Jackson Powers Johnson went forty four to the Raiders, who by the way, they're going to make him a guard. So so much for that. Um, but um, but it's it, but everybody's anybody was, that was watching was probably saying the same thing. Okay, trade up. Give one of your yeah. thirds. Give a fourth. Give a fifth. I don't care. Give give, give something. We need Zach Frazier. But he just falls to him. He just magically falls to. Him. Yeah, when JPJ went, I think a lot of people started holding their breath, right? Because mm-hmm. um. There was rumor Tampa Bay liked that that Barton kid, um, but again, like I told you Thursday night and even the preceding Monday, okay, maybe he's going to be great, but I just don't understand how he went from like the third or fourth best center in about two weeks to the number one guy, right? Uh, especially because he even admittedly says, "Well, I'm a guard, and I played guard most of the time, but you know, I played center some center too." Uh, where okay, well, that's kind of an interesting interview. That you, like it's like you're kind of excited to be a center. Um, and maybe you're right. Maybe the Bucks will make him a, a guard uh, in Tampa Bay. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so that's why everyone's sitting there like, oh, my God. Because I think at that point, that's, that's where that's, that had to be the play. If you don't get Zach Frazier, I think it's a severe drop-off afterwards. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and it just it just fell in their lap, and he didn't even trade at all, which is just – it just blows my mind. How do you sit there? How do you sit there in that Steelers war room and say, eh, "No, nah, let's just hold." I wonder. I wonder, like, wh- like what it was, what it was like in there, because that had to be tense. Yeah. Yep. So we go to the third round, and now it's kind of where you and I thought it would go. We're like, okay, you know, tackle, center, center, tackle, and we thought here probably cornerback or wide receiver. I had a couple wide receivers, and like you said, Joe, they were flying off the board. 
Uh, you know, with McDaniel's gone, Worthy uh, kind of last with late, thought maybe there's a chance he's gone. The dark horse I wrote down, because I'd seen him play so much in the big time, was Roman Wilson. Uh, the only reason I wrote the kid's name down, and I watched this happen with Penn State, because the Penn State game this year was particularly very close. Uh, it, was, it was the first game that, if you remember, Harbaugh was, you know, he had to be taken. He wasn't allowed to be there. And Roman Wilson was the one player, not J.J. McCarthy, who brought the team out, who, 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 who gathered them around. And, like, I'm watching him doing this, this game. And, and, you know, if you remember that, Michigan ran 21, 21 straight running plays against Penn State. Yeah. And he blocked the ever-living crap on every play. I'm like, God, he looks like, he looks like Heinz Ward down there. And here you go. Here's a kid. He also caught 78% of the passes thrown to him. He has very good hands. He's strong. He's not – uh, he's not going to come flying out of the gate fast, but he has this next level. It's kind of weird. You see him catch the ball, and it's like, whoa, 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 second gear, third gear, like almost like on a video game or something, and pretty soon a cornerback can't catch him. The safety can't, sure as hell can't catch him. So, I, I mean, when, when he got him, and I have a bunch of Michigan friends, they were like, you got Wilson, you suck, and they're all Browns fans. I mean, they, they're like, you got the guy. You got the guy. So I gave that another A. I mean, I am ecstatic that Roman Wilson's coming to Pittsburgh. He has been described as someone that is who 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 sets the culture, and I think that's that's another big thing. I've also heard him described as the anti Deont- Deontay Johnson. So that's cool. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, he's he's everything that Deontay Johnson isn't. You know, De- Deontay Johnson would rather um, do anything than than actually block or I don't know, pay attention to on a play. But uh, as a fumble's rolling around you, but um. Yeah, he's he's no, he's known as for his character, um, and yeah, he's a blocking machine. Even though he's five eleven, one eighty five, he's gonna. He sounds like he just wants to knock people on their on their butt, and that's that's exactly what that's exactly what Arthur Smith wants in his in his offense, and that's exactly what the th- the teams like like the Forty ers do. That's why Christian McCaffrey blares off a 60 yard run is because everybody gets involved. Even the wide receivers, you know, help block. Well, I'm glad you said it. And it was a really good point about a character ad. We go back to what we said in the beginning of the podcast, top of the hour, right? You had Rooney and those two were sick of losing. This isn't the way we, we do things. Part of that wasn't the lo- the losing. It's how they're losing. It's this character crap. So Deontay Johnson is gone. Uh, Kenny Pickett is gone. Uh, All these things, whether you think that's true or not, there was some kind of not good stuff happening in in this, in the locker room. They're all gone. Chooks gone, you know, and, and, and here we go. You're bringing a character ad, like you said, uh, and it's the right character ad. So again, a a great addition. Um, I, I was actually a little flabbergasted that Roman Wilson fell to us to where he did. Yeah. Um, Almost every time I've seen a uh, mock draft, I've seen Roman Wilson mock, mock to the Steelers. So that's that's really cool that they got him. Um, apparently, he went to high school in Hawaii with uh, with, uh, the, with Herbig. the Herbig brothers. That's that's, so that's St. Louis High School, which is a big deal there. Um, I guess it would be the equivalent of like Central Catholic or maybe Aliquippa Um in Pennsylvania way it's it's Hawaii so is as serious as they get about high school football there which is which they can be you know um uh there's some pretty big dudes that have come out of there so yeah St. Louis High School is like one of the elite programs in the state uh and him and both the Herbigs went there um real quick about um Zach Frazier um I almost uh ruined his career and I almost destroyed the Steelers draft um Saturday at um at uh Akersher Stadium they had they a uh, Steelers draft party and and I went to that and it was it was okay. Really the, the, the main things were um Cam Hayward did a live version of his podcast and he had like all of the, the, the draftees that were drafted um uh Thursday and Friday. He had those on there. And I think there they had like other people that they were um, talking to and stuff. So I mean, other, otherwise it was just it was just like it was just a, a standard, you know, <laughs> people 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 hanging, yinzers hanging out at the Great Hall and stuff. 
Well, I was in the it was I was I was in the store. I'm coming out of the store and I don't know what was going on, but people were like like pushing me aside. And I'm like, what's what, what, why why are why are people touching me? Get away from me. It was because <laughs> Zach Frazier just did uh, uh Cam Hayward's podcast and they were moving him from like one area to the other, and he had like a security team. There was like five or six people like like ushering him along, like like who's gonna who's what's <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna go after Zach Frazier and stuff. So I, I didn't know what was going on. So I, I almost ran into him and so anyway, I almost <laughs> I, I almost I almost ruined ruined the draft. But <laughs> um so um the other pick in the third round, who I love because this is the Kenny Kenny Pickett pick <laughs> is Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from NC State. And yeah. this is fascinating because he was considered maybe one of the top linebackers, but he falls to the the end of the third round because he doesn't have an ACL. And I could think of another player that didn't have an ACL that turned out pretty good. So, uh, you know, I don't think that's so much of a concern. Yeah, Peyton Wilson, high risk, pretty high reward. I mean, two ACLs. Um, the highlight film, though, of him is insane. Uh, there's a pass play against Miami, I think it was. Um, and it's a, it was a slot receiver, and he, he undercuts the safety. Safety totally blows the tackle. He turns around, Wilson, uh, one of the 15 million Wilsons are on the team now. And he absolutely runs the guy down on a dead sprint. So his ACLs are from just insane effort. His speed is still incredible. Side to side, reminds me a lot of Shazier. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and really, Joe, we still – I know we got Queen, but we still need to address the linebacker a little bit. So they did that with this pick. Um, I, I don't know if I give it the A-plus because of the, the high risk in there with his injury possibly flaring back up. But, man, the reward's incredible. So another high grade there and another, another great pick at, at the – at the end of the third round. I'm loving it because even if it doesn't work out, okay, you lose, you lose a third rounder. Oh, well, you know, not, not, you know, if he was a second rounder, I'd be pretty, pretty angry, but third round. Yeah, that's fine. Um, His, his awards last year, disgusting. Chuck, Chuck Benaric award, Butkus award, unanimous all American ACC defensive player of the year, two times first team, all ACC. So, and and uh, apparently he had, like I guess in 2021, 2022, he did have injuries, and he was he 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 did have knee injuries. Uh, so so I mean he has been injury. Um, it was a it was a shoulder injury and um and a knee injury. So you know he's not you know but but he has been pretty pretty injury free for like the past year or two. So that's good. Well, the rumor mill, speaking of rumors, before we jumped on here, we are talking about rumors of possible receivers. Um, the rumor mill here is this kid came highly, highly recommended by a certain Bill Cowher, who keeps very much in touch with what happens at NC State. Oh, um, interesting. So, yeah, apparently there was a, a little bit of a love fest going on there. And so, you know, whatever, whoever reached out to whom, I don't know. But that's, that's the rumor on the street. Um, and, you know, uh, which – that's kind of scary because some Bill picked some pretty bad linebackers while he was here. Alonzo Jackson is all we need to say. Um, but no. He got um, some good ones too. <laughs> he, did, he did. He did. Um, yeah, but, but Peyton Wilson, uh, he could be sky's the limit. So, I mean, this could be another, another kid that just – for what they're getting at this point after four, four kids added to this roster – it's really, really impressive. Um, in fact, it will finish it out here with these next couple of picks. To me, this is the most Baltimore Ravens, Pittsburgh Steeler draft ever. I mean, they really, we always sit here and look at the Baltimore Ravens and you're like, man, those are smart picks. Pick good guys when they needed to. Can't believe they got this guy or that guy. And at this point, they're going, I think, toe for toe with the Ravens, if not this year, better than the Ravens uh, and, and the way they drafted. In fact, I was kind of reading through that today. I mean, it's hard to go through almost any format, ESPN, Yahoo, uh, the, um, the Athletic. Almost everybody said Pittsburgh Steelers won the draft, which 
I can't ever remember that happening, Joe. I mean, they've gotten a good grade for the first two rounds, but for a complete draft, everybody's saying that, you know, they, they were probably one or two with the Patriots. So um, it is, it is amazing because um, for years, the, the Steelers were kind of antiquated in how they drafted. And these past couple years, and, and usually, usually when the Steelers draft, every draft expert, by the way, draft grades the day after a draft don't mean a darn thing. But anyway, all those grades were like poor because they didn't like what the Steelers did. Well, this, this past last year and this year, People are loving it and they're talking about value and, you know, where that, you know, getting, getting um, Peyton Wilson, where they got him is amazing. Getting, you know, all these, all these guys that, 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 that they got them way um, later than they should have been drafted. They should have been drafted a lot sooner and they, and they got them at, at really good value points. So it is, um, it is awesome to hear just, just about in every metric you could do. They were saying that the Steelers had a great draft that um, RIS, that relative athletic score. I think they had like the third best out of that too. So you have good athletes at a great value. It's just, it's just a home run, another home run. Yep. Now, after that pick, Joe, as we get in around five, the two guys I had left that were available in the cornerbacks were TJ Tampa, who I liked a lot, and Ron Watts out of Texas, which we'll get to later. And I thought, okay, this Ron Watts would be very nice here. But they didn't go Ron Watts. They went another direction, didn't they? What, in the fourth round? Yeah, after after Wilson. Now we get to the fifth round. Uh, now we get to Mason McCormick. The, the guard from South Dakota, Dakota State. He's who, nuts. <laughs> what's that? He's nuts. He's I nuts. love this kid. He's, um, he's, didn't he make his own video to Motley Crue or something like that? He made his own video. Now, and, and you got to realize, the Steelers probably after this year do have a little bit of an issue with guard. A lot of people don't think Daniels will come back. Um, so this was a need. A guard was a need. It was maybe a little bit further down the list than some of the others. But it was a need. And they addressed it with a kid who's uh, just tenacious. Um, he's a good kid. He's a phenomenal run blocker. Um, he's team captain the last three years. He's all confidence. He's everything you need him to be. And he, he what rem, if you go back to the Kendrick Green pick, and that's a kid I, I saw play a lot. And at the time, I kind of liked it. The problem was Kendrick Green played t- with tenacious – you know, what tenacity, whatever you want to say, because he had a lot of shortcomings. He did he didn't have the long arms. He was very powerful from the waist down, waist up, uh, not as strong, you know, and that was something where a lot of said, well, maybe he can wait work in the weight room. Maybe he can do this, maybe he can do that. And we know Kendrick Green just didn't work out very well here. Um this guy's Kendrick Green on steroids, right? He <laughs> he he has the tenacity, but he also has the physical build. He's incredibly athletic for a guard. If you want a pulling guard, this kid's it. Um, relatively health free to this point, and he has that nastiness that you need a guard for the NFL. So I really, really like this pick. I'm thinking, okay, this shot, this point, we probably don't have a shot. I don't know what they're going to do a cornerback, but I mean, I loved it. I thought it was a great pick. Yeah, this it's it's genius because you know. They're not just addressing the needs this year. They're addressing the needs next year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Daniels might go um, in, in a year or two. Isaac Sam Mullen might go. And, and here you have somebody that's possibly a replacement. It's, it's, it's brilliant. And yeah, everything, everything says that this guy is a beast and he's, he's, he's awesome. So that's, that's amazing. He will be a guy in Latrobe. You will know him by hearing him. I guarantee that. Oh yeah, he's that, he, he's that guy. You know, I, you go to a party or you're like, oh yeah, like Joe's here or whatever it is. I mean, you hear him before you see him. It'll be this guy. You'll hear him in nice. the drum. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the sixth round, they get Logan Lee, a, a defensive tackle from Iowa. Were you familiar with? Familiar yeah. With so this? watching Logan play the last couple of years, he's a big part of those good Iowa defenses. I mean, he's he's very quick. Uh, what? Remind what Logan Lee kind of reminded me of before the Steelers got him. He's a slender build, has shorter arms, but he's massively quick with his first step. 
He is very, very quick hands. He's whatever, uh, a black belt in some discipline. I don't know what it is, uh, like Greg Lloyd was, right? Um, and that just gives him a quickness. And he's the guy that's usually in the backfield. Uh, six sacks the uh, last year, led the team in quarterback pressures. And that's pretty good for that Iowa defense, which is among the best in the entire country for the last couple of years. But Logan Lee is a guy that reminds me a little bit of an Aaron Jones. You know, Aaron Jones or Aaron Smith, I'm sorry. Aaron Smith was a guy I, to this day, feel like didn't get enough credit because he played defensive end on a 3-4. Um, but, man, was he good. And, it's, and, and Logan Lee, if you look at the stats out of college and their physical build, it's almost identical. It's kind of scary. So Logan Lee, I don't know, Joe. I mean, he's one of those guys he, we might not see him make the team. He's also one of those guys that might surprise a lot of people and, and, and actually play some. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, if he needs to put on any weights, call me, but I will, you know, I'll, 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 I'll take you. We could hit up uh, well, some right the pizza podcast we've always wanted to do. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> good now. Well, Fiori's, good now Fiori's cold get a couple cold large cold. pizzas. You're good to go. He's like, we'll, we'll just stay away from that dumb place with the cold uh, cheese. <laughs> but uh um and then also in the sixth round they got uh ryan watts a cornerback from texas i don't know i don't know anything that was a guy that i told you after peyton wilson he was one of the guys i kind of checked like if we can grab him in the next round and for whatever reason and again these people have much more insight than i do i'm sitting there like why is he falling why is he continuing to fall okay there's a chance we can actually get this kid now Ryan Watts, I don't want to say he's a one-trick pony. What he does very, very well is he plays good press defense for a cornerback. He's not blazing fast. He's extremely, extremely physical. He will reroute a wide receiver. He reads the quarterback exceptionally well. He has these massive, like, you know, the NBA arms that wingspan are yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i mean it's ridiculous i mean his arms are as long as a day is long and i think i think he had the longest arms of any cornerback that attended the combine uh so he's like freaky looking and then um he also is a very good sound tackler he's a great run tackler so i don't know if you'll see him a lot on the field i think this kid's not only going to make the team i think he makes an impact so now i'm looking at after you said joe now we've added seven guys and I'm not looking at any of these things saying, eh, that one's okay. All of these guys, yeah. well done, Steelers. Yeah. Well, well done. The, the the Steelers have a type when it comes to cornerback. They want them tall. They want them long. And, hey. They want Ike Taylor. <laughs> they want Ike Taylor, yeah. yeah. She was Ike <laughs> Taylor. Yeah. So, yeah, um, just another – you know, on paper, a great draft, but now what else do they need? What else? What they still need something. They still need what you say they need another wide receiver, and they really don't have a slot uh, corner. Right, those would be the two needs, and then so they restructured uh, High Smith's uh, contract like what Saturday, or or no, I mean Wednesday night or something kind of late, which kind of led you to believe. Something maybe a something's foot. gonna happen, yeah. <laughs> so, I think one of them happens. Um, yeah, there's some wide receivers out there. I don't know if we're gonna get one of the big three. My my big three. When I say big three, Joe, I, I guess it would be Ayuk, Higgins, and then Debo. Um, those would be the three I would say are the big three. I, I, believe it when I see it. But I, honestly, like I said at the top of the hour with you, <laughs> the way Omar Khan has been this year. I wouldn't be shocked. I would have been shocked last year and for the last 35 years, but not this year. <laughs> not this year. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like they have the orders. Like, we're all in. We're all in for this year. So, very, right. All very those years with Calver and Chuck Noll, hey, we're going to go to Hills or Dollar General. They're going to go to Target and Macy's. Uh, so... But this year we're going to target Macy's and Nordstrom. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. And uh, yeah, I just want to see how this all shakes out, especially, you know. And now, hey, Dan Moore, it might be time to learn right tackle, buddy. It might be <laughs> the time. 
it'd be a good time. I don't know what you're doing in the next couple months. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> you YouTube, um, whatever. But yeah, yeah. Um, one of those things where Dan Moore probably could have been better than what he was, obviously. I, I think his ten years of Steelers is going to be done after this year, and yeah. maybe better off for both teams or both people. But you know what? Both individuals. He was a fourth round draft pick mm-hmm. that started right away. He was in yep. that same year with the Kendrick Green disaster, and and yeah, he wasn't the greatest tackle, but he wasn't the worst either. And he, he to get that much production from a fourth round tackle, that's a success. And, all right, yeah. yeah. You'll go somewhere else, and you know, prob- people will probably see it's like, well, he was a, he was a four year starter. They're like, cool, go, yeah, you know, get, thank you, thank you for your service. He'll get a twenty million plus deal for three years, probably, sure. probably. Yeah, probably. He'll go to Denver or somebody, and yeah. Um, uh, the only other thing I had written down here, Joe, and I don't know if if you want to discuss. I thought um, every once in a while, man, Pat McAfee's shows really produce some awesome stuff, and Roger Goodell going on there saying he's thinking of going to 18 weeks uh-huh. back to the few bye weeks and then a uh, Super Bowl three day weekend. So now we're taking a Super Bowl into President's Day weekend. Uh, I'm not all that ab- opposed to that. Um, I guess I just still wonder the ramifications of it because I was thinking, okay, doing all the math, I realized MLB, uh, NFL, um, NHL, NASCAR, they all go so much longer than the NFL. But in none of those sports, I know hockey's physical. These guys beat the crap out of each other. I, I don't know. Maybe you increase the roster sizes to 59 or something. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the balance is because I can't imagine a lot of these players are going to be jumping up and down to go that long. Um. <sighs> It's, well, it's when you throw more money at them, they're, they're, I mean, now I remember when they went to 17, a lot of them said, there's no way in hell that we're going to 18, which means it's probably happening. Probably happening. But yeah, first of all, they'd be making more money. But the, for the product itself, that's really scary. The more games they play, the more chance they have of getting hurt. And some, some year you might have a um, Super Bowl of – the Chiefs back up against the 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 49ers back up or something like that in the Super Bowl. And it'll be a really crappy game. And your biggest game of the year is filled by played by a bunch of backups because you played so many games and it, it just waters down the product. So I totally get that. I totally we we all saw this coming when they went to 17. It's like, yeah, they're probably gonna go to 18. So it's not a surprise. But I don't know if that's such a good idea. I do like the three day weekend thing though, because people always yeah. say the day after the Super Bowl should be a part, should be a, a weekend, should be a, a day off. So if you make that President's Day, perfect. We have the day off, perfect. I was just kind of funny that I guess, and in, in, you know, maybe you and I sound like the two guys up in the balcony of the Muppet Show right now, but. I mean, he was so, like, he didn't even care about preseason, man. I remember, Joe, when they played, like, six preseason games, you know, and it was, like, kind of fun to see how everybody panned out and all these guys are playing. And now we're down to, like, barely, are we even going to have, like, one preseason game? You know, I mean, it's, like, it's just. I I don't remember preseason games, like, in the 80s. Um, I do remember a little bit in the 90s, but I don't remember them in in the 80s. Right. So I don't remember, like, I don't know, were they intense? Were they trying? I don't remember. I don't know. I can't imagine Chuck Noll telling a bunch of players, hey, don't try or whatever. We're not yeah, going to play. I can imagine, imagine it playing like all the stars, even on a on a preseason game. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you want to make this team, you better show the best effort. And I, and I think that is what you still get with preseason. It's kind of fun, especially those last two games, or at least traditionally I've been the last two games, to see see those guys who are on that bubble and probably knew it, and they were giving their best damn effort to either make the team or be, you know, very hard not to to sign. And I think we say it's a, a, a an NFL thing, but I think in the Rust Belt, our cities, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Detroit, Buffalo, we love a guy, even Philly, you love a guy that shouldn't have made a team or he's, you know, a seventh, the seventh-round pick or the sixth-round pick or the walk-on make the team. Um, and that's where that comes from is those preseason success stories. We're like, holy crap, this kid's, you know, really, 
really putting forth the the effort. And you may have a guy that was picked the third or second round that's kind of faltering. And that's everybody loves that story, but I think it's this, really lovely here for whatever. This, the, who was that quarterback? And his name escapes me now. The rocket science, the rocket scientist who was just he was oh. just like three or four teams. Yeah. Um he may he has a career because he absolutely balled out on a final preseason game and he beat Landry Jones for that final quarterback spot. Right. Um right. Yeah, it's 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 a wonderful thing. It is the, that final preseason game is the most fascinating thing because it determines people's lives. These some of these yeah. guys have been playing all their life, and they played all their life to get to the NFL. And this is their dream. They either make the team and continue with their dream, or they don't make the team and they're bagging groceries in I in Des Moines yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, so I thought that was eye opening. Um, he talked about how he hopes maybe within the next five years that every single team will play in a game internationally during the season. And he hopes to get an international team in 10 years, which I remember the world league. I remember being really excited about that for some reason, in the early nineties, when they came out the Orlando thunder and the, the Rhine fire. And um, wasn't John Elway's dad, a coach for one of them over there in Europe. Um, there's the Barcelona dragons. Yeah. And it was just kind of cool to have some new teams, Montreal machine. Uh, and then it kind of fell flat. There was like two or three world bowls. Um, and then that was really it. I remember Scott Mitchell came from the Orlando thunder. He did pretty good for the Detroit lions for a while, but um, I just, I, I'll have a hard time. You know, the Steelers got to go play like, you know, the Paris croissants or whatever. It's the loop. They have to do the two point conversion. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. And, and I, I uh, think what's going to happen eventually, <laughs> is I think there's going to be an entire European division. I think there's going to be four teams, whether they're expansion teams, one of the moves, Jacksonville, Jacksonville is definitely moving to London. Um, whether, whether it's whatever, whatever it is, I think there's going to be four teams in London. I don't know how I'll mean, four teams in Europe. I don't know how they're going to work it out. I don't know if you go through, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how that would work logistically I, I, or, or even, you know, Let's say you're a cornerback drafted from from University of Texas by the Steelers or or the, from the by by the Paris Croissants. Now you got to go work in another country. I don't know how how that's going to work. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But but I I think that's that's the future. Is I think there's going to be an entire European division. I don't know. Maybe they'll play like all their home games against each other for like the first half of the year and then come to visit the States or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But I totally see that happening. I totally see. I mean, we we, we saw it coming with when um, there was a like a Wednesday afternoon game still got like 20 million viewers. I mean, the NFL is just foolproof right now. And, and, and it's so popular that they can't help but expand it. And this, there's going to be a game every every day of the week and all this stuff. I mean, there's just so much still more money to be made. So they're going to they're going to squeeze every little that, piece out of this. Maybe that's why he wants to go back to the two bi week system and the 18 weeks, because you know what's going to happen. I mean, especially in in good towns, you know, like uh, Pittsburgh, New York, whatever. Um, Steelers fans are going to be pissed if they have to lose a home game to like, you know, Mexico or Canada or, or, right. or, or London, you know, or whatever it may be. I mean, it would, you know, I have a lot of friends that are season ticket holders and uh, I use a lot of those seats and I would be like, yeah, well, why are we playing the Jets in London? That would have been a great, you know, right. or, or really if it was like, you know, like the Browns or, or the Bengals or the Ravens, someone you really like to see a home game. Uh, I'd hope that wouldn't be the case. I mean, if it's the Seahawks or the, you know, the Broncos or something. Okay. But I, I, any divisional games, those should be played here. Right. You know, I, I mean, that's that those have to stay here to States. At least I would think so, but it, it, it's very interesting. I guess he must know um, that it's working or, or maybe the viewership's up there. I, I don't know. Um, I could have sworn one year that we did a podcast and you had a lady on the podcast. It's from like England maybe australia 
I, I, I can't remember which, but I'm pretty sure she had accent. Joe almost remember that very, I would love to know. I would love to know if you had somebody out in your viewership. I have a friend in, um, in England that is a huge Pittsburgh sports fan. And the reason why they're Pittsburgh sports fans, because they got root sports Pittsburgh all the way out in England. <laughs> so, so they became fi- pirates and penguins fans. And yeah. you know, you can't help it. Could be, could be a Steelers fan. So maybe that yeah. was, maybe that was, I, mean, was. I would legitimately love to, to know that. I'm not trying to be stereotypical. I would legitimately love to see a podcast someday where you had some of these people on here from these countries. And I, saying, think, hey, I could, I'll bet I could find yeah. some Steelers uh, fans in England yeah. or, or another country. I'll right. bet. Yeah. Yeah. Is I'll this bet. legit? Are they? No, she was from Ireland. The lady you had on was from Ireland. Remember her? I do. Yes. I do. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> did you see what happened with the whole thing with Tony Khan? Yeah. <laughs> So Tony uh-huh. Khan is the owner of AEW Wrestling, and on the previous the night before the draft, he got quote unquote attacked by by these wrestlers right. and got laid out and quote unquote died or was severely injured. So what is and he is also his dad owns the the Jacksonville Jaguars and I think they own an English Premier League I think Tottenham or something like that. You know, Tony Tony Khan doesn't. You know, he can get extra cheese on his Whopper. They, 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 you know, they they got, they got plenty of money. <laughs> so anyway, he shows up. He's 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 part of he's part of the staff for the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Jacksonville Jaguars war room. He was wearing a, a neck brace. I love it. <laughs> Commit to it, buddy. Yes. Oh, the Jaguars. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling yeah, you, I think I... I think the Jaguars will definitely move. Um, to, to they, what they should do is take like a five year rolling average. So when they're ready to jump ship, like, okay, we're ready to get a team in London, they take the five years and whoever the four worst teams are, attendance wise, uh, win percentage wise, and they play each other for the London Bowl. And like, okay, whoever, mm. whoever wins moves to London, whoever loses, <laughs> whoever loses, like, okay, it's Jacksonville versus Arizona or Jacksonville versus Carolina, whoever loses. The franchise moves to London. Congratulations. You're now a Paris croissant. (laughs) (laughs) That would be be the best name ever. Could you imagine that that helmet? Could you imagine that? It's a giant croissant. (laughs) (laughs) But there's a baseball team in Montreal called the Biscuits. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, they put a croissant on there. (laughs) Great mascot. Great marketing. (laughs) Oh, uh, that is a sack. Yes, we do. we got another sack. We oui, we. Oui. Oh God. Yeah. All right. That's that's. I mean, that means it's time to go. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'll see you. Good night, Joe. Thank you.